I, I want to encourage your hearts through the word of God. First John 5, 14 and 15 says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. What John says to us is essentially that when we pray the will of God, we can know in confidence, we can know with assurance, we can set our weight on the fact that God hears our prayers. And not only does he hear our prayers, but he guarantees that he will give us what we've asked him for. So tonight as we're praying, um, we set ourselves in alignment with the will of God because the scripture is very clear that we have boldness and access to come to God with confidence and with faith. And, and so tonight as we're praying, I, I, I want to encourage you to maintain your confidence in God. The word says, Proverbs 3 and 26, for the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. And then in 14, 26, Proverbs continues to say, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. And we all know what Philippians 1 and 6 says, that we're confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in us will perform it until the day of Christ. And so tonight, as we're lifting our hearts in prayer, as we're lifting our minds in prayer, as we're going before God, I encourage you with the words of Hebrews 10 and 35, cast not away thy confidence, which have a great recompense of reward. God is faithful and we can be confident First John 5, that if we pray according to his will, we'll have that thing that we ask for. Let's go to God. Father, we thank you because there is no failure in you. We thank you because you perfect that that concerns us. Thank you because you have promised to give us all things that pertain to life and godliness. God, we bless you. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your mercy that won't let us be consumed. We thank you for new mercies. Lord, we thank you for sufficient grace. We thank you that you already know what we have need of. And we thank you that you promised us to add all other things to us if we would first seek your kingdom. God, tonight we thank you that you promised to keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds on you. Thank you that whatever comes up in the rest of this week, in the rest of this month, even into the rest of the year, that you are faithful and you will always provide a way of escape for us. Lord, we're going to spend some time in your presence and we want to start with our prayers of thanksgiving we want to begin we want to enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise and so we thank you now for all of your many great blessings it's the lord's mercies that we're not consumed and we're grateful lord we're grateful for the very gift of life we're grateful for the opportunity to be a part of this organization of people we're grateful for the opportunity to approach you with boldness and confidence. God, we're so grateful. We're thankful. We bless you because you're good. Hallelujah. We bless you because you're good. Your mercy is everlasting. Your truth endures to all generations. We bless you. We bless you. We give you honor and we give you glory. We give you praise and thanksgiving. Lord, above all, you're worthy. If nothing else is ever done for us, if you never reveal another piece of yourself to us, you are worthy of all of our glory. And so we take this moment in prayer to simply give you glory. We ask for nothing now. We thank you for everything. Glory to God. You're holy and righteous. You're long-suffering and patient. You're good. You're faithful. You're honest and true. There's no 
failure in you. And so now, Lord, as we transition from the gate of thanksgiving to the brazen altar, we thank you for the power of the blood. We praise you for the power of the shed blood of Christ on the cross of Calvary. We thank you that the blood washes us, that it sanctifies us. We thank you that your blood has set us free from the curse of the law. We thank you that your blood satisfies the sin debt of our souls. Lord, your blood covers us from the works of darkness, and in your blood there is new life. Lord, we have access into the divine nature of God through the blood of Jesus. Your blood gives us a right to be healed in our bodies. Your blood gives us a right to be healed in our mind, in our emotions, in our souls, our spirit. The scripture declares that by your stripes, we're healed in every dimension of our lives. And so we thank you for the power of the blood, that precious blood that will never, never, never lose its power. We thank you for your blood. And so now as the blood offering is given, we plead the blood over our lives. We plead the blood over our minds. We plead the blood over our will and our emotions. We plead the blood of Jesus over our relationships. We plead the blood of Jesus over our wounds and our hurts. We plead the blood against every anxiety and every disease that, that torments us and every infirmity that comes against us. We plead the blood of Jesus. There's life in the blood. And so we call upon the blood that covers us. Cover us from the hand of the enemy with your blood tonight. In the name of the Lord, Lord, we pray that you cover us in your blood. You said in your word that when you see the blood, you cause death to pass over us. You cause the curse to pass over us. So now cover us in your blood so that when you look at us, you won't see our sin or our iniquity. You won't see our failures or our faults. You'll see only your blood. Lord, would you cover us in your blood tonight? Now, Lord, even as we come to this labor of cleansing, Lord, we pray now that you would wash us. We acknowledge that we need to repent. We acknowledge that we need to confess. We acknowledge that we need to be washed. And so now, in the name of Jesus, we admit to you that we're born in sin, that we're shaped in iniquity. Lord, all of our days are full of trouble. We've inherited a sin nature from our daddy, Adam. And we know that you're a holy God. And so when we desire to do good, the evilness of our nature is present on every hand. So Lord, if it is your will, would you wash us? We admit to you now that it's so easy, it is so easy to put things before you. So we ask you now, Lord, have we put our desire for a relationship before you? Lord, have we put our desire for a job before you? Have we put our desire for a ministry opportunity or, or for some form of advancement or, or something that would feed our flesh? Have we put it before you? God, wash us of it. Lord, have we abused the holiness of your name? Your name is holy. Have we abused the righteousness of your name? Oh God, forgive us. Lord, today, have we abused the sanctity of your set-aside worship? Have our minds wandered from you in the time that was set aside for you? Lord, have we not honored our mothers and our fathers? Have we been disrespectful? Have we, have we had an attitude that wasn't pleasing to you toward our parents and those in authority over us? Lord, have we spoken an untruth? Have we killed our brother or our sister through hatred and malice and jealousy and envy? Lord, have we transgressed your law? Have we looked on the things of another and desired it with a fiery passion, Lord, have we, have we transgressed your law? Wash us, 
wash us. Wash us, create in us the clean heart. Renew the right spirit within us. Don't take your spirit away from us, but restore the joy of salvation to us. Wash us. Lord, wash us with the washing of your word. Wash us with the washing of your spirit. Wash us with the washing of your blood. Make us clean. You said, who can ascend into the heel of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who's not lifted up his soul unto vanity. Lord, wash us. We need to be clean. Help us to be clean. Help us, help us, help us, help us. Uh, help us to be clean. Help us to be holy. Lord, you're holy. And Lord, now as we enter into the holy place of your presence, we realize again that the entrance of your word gives light. And so we thank you for your spirit that is a revealer of all things. God, you promised us that you lead us and guide us into all truth by your spirit. And so we thank you for the promise of your word that your spirit will rest upon us and that he'd abide within us. God, we thank you that your spirit doesn't come empty-handed. Hallelujah. But it comes bearing gifts. The gift of prophecy and the gift of wisdom and the gift of knowledge and the gift of tongues and interpretation and of dreams. We thank you for the gift of miracles and the gift of faith. We thank you for the gift of the apostle and the prophet and the evangelist and the pastor and the teacher. We thank you for the gift of administration and the gift of service and the gift of helps and the gift of mercy. We thank you for the gift of giving and we thank you, we thank you that you don't come empty handed but you come with gifts and that you come with anointing. We thank you that you don't come empty handed. We thank you that you're calling or without repentance. And so, Father, we thank you now that your spirit gives us wisdom and that your spirit gives us understanding. We thank you that your spirit gives counsel and might. We thank you that your spirit gives us knowledge and brings us into the fear of God. We thank you for the Holy Ghost tonight, uh, our keeper, the sustainer of our faith. He that intercedes for us when we do not know what to pray for. We thank you for the comforter has come. Glory to God. We thank you that you are comfort to us. That you proceed from the Father and you proclaim the words of the Son. We thank you that you are a perfect spirit, an excellent spirit. We thank you that you're a revealer of the secret thing, yea, even the deep things of God. We thank you now for your spirit your spirit that hovered over the waters and creation sprung forth, the same spirit that dwells within us and sanctifies us and makes us holy and empowers us for the work of the ministry. We thank you for your spirit. God, we thank you because he's an illuminating spirit. He opens our understanding and he leads us and guides us. And Father, now as we come to the table of the shoe bread, we thank you for the power of your Son, the living Word. For it is He that came in the volume of the book. We thank you for the one who became Graphe and Rhema, merged them together and became Logos, the emphatic word, the word that gives us power, the word that changes us, the word that convicts us and convinces us and converts us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that fulfilled the law and the prophets. And it is in him that we live, we move and have our beings. God, we thank you for your word. Lord, we realize that in your word all things consist. Your word is life. Your word is eternal life. That is why we cannot take your word lightly. We don't take it lightly for your word is life to us. Your word is more valuable to us than our daily bread. You said I am the bread of life. 
the manna that rained down in the dew. Lord, you want to speak to us daily, so we pray. Give us our daily bread. We'll give you the glory. And so now, Lord, as we've come to the table of shoe bread, and now we're entering into the place of the altar of incense, we recognize you as sovereign and that you delight in the prayers and the worship of your children. You've taught us that we should always pray and not faint. You've taught us that we should pray without ceasing, that we should pray fervently. You taught us that we should pray with the understanding and that we should pray in the unknown tongue. You taught us that we should pray in our secret closet and that there are models for us to follow in prayer and that we should pray according to your will. So now we come to the altar of incense, the place of prayer, and we lift our prayers to you. We pray now for those who have brought requests we pray now for those asking for healing in their bodies. We bring to you those who ask for guidance and for direction and for clarity and for comfort. We bring those to you who are seeking the peace of God. We bring those to you who stand in the need of protection and that, that need the doors of opportunity to spring open for them. And we bring to you prayers for deliverance and prayers that you would sustain us in your will. We bring our prayers to you. Lord, we thank you that the Son ever lives to make intercession for us and that when we don't know what to pray for, the Spirit makes intercession for us as well. So, Lord, let our prayers, our supplications be as a sweet-smelling savor unto you. Lord, if there's anything that hinders our prayers now, we pray that you deal with it. If there's anything clogging the connection of our prayer line, we pray that you deal with it now. Fix it. Clear our mind. Let us think your thoughts. Let us pray your will. And now, Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming into the Shekinah glory of God. Glory. We thank you for being in the very presence of God, into the Holy of Holies. We thank you for the Son, Jesus, Bless you, bless you. We thank you for your son Jesus, who upon the cross, when he shed his blood, became both high priest and sacrifice, and ripped the veil in twain, that we might come, Hebrews 4, before the throne with boldness, hallelujah, so that we might obtain mercy and grace to help us in the time of need. We thank you for letting us come into the Shekinah of your presence. And we realize that there are some who have not been able to taste the sweetness of your presence, but you've granted it to us and you gave us access with boldness. And so we thank you now. Glory to God. We thank you for the ability to come into your presence. We have an open invitation to come before you. We don't come as strangers, we come as sons and daughters. We don't come as strangers, no, we come as sons and daughters. We don't come as strangers, we come as sons and daughters. We come crying, Abba, Father, for we've not received the spirit of bondage, but the spirit of adoption, that the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're heirs with God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We come crying, Abba. Abba, Father, Daddy, 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 hear our prayers. Lord, we realize that it is here in your presence that the fullness of joy is present. We realize that there's liberty here. We realize that we find freedom from the curse of sin here. We realize that this is the place that we behold the brilliance of your glory. And as we look upon your face, we become like you. We conform to the image of your son in the Shekinah of your presence. Lord, teach us how to live here. Teach us how to abide under the shadow of your body. Teach us how to stay here. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in his house and inquire in his temple to behold the beauty of the Lord. Teach us, teach us, teach us, teach us, teach us, teach us how to live here, 
how to stay here, how to practice your presence, to realize that we live in the perpetual presence of God, that whether we're in the grocery store or in our cars or at our jobs or in our homes or in the sanctuary of God, that we're in the presence of God and your ears are ever attent to the prayers of the righteous, that we could speak to you in any place at any time and you have promised to hear us. And Lord, sometimes even when we will not speak, you've promised that when we've set our hearts to pray, that you'll grant us our requests, that you show us great and mighty things that we know not of. Teach us how to practice your presence. And now, Lord, in your presence, there's an ark. There's an ark of the covenant. And in that ark, there are the tables of the law. Your word that gives direction. So now we pray that you will teach us how to walk up right before you. Hallelujah. Lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Your ways are higher than ours. So give us to walk in your way. Order our steps in your word. Cause us not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor to stand in the way of the sinner, nor to sit in the seat of the scornful. But teach us how to go in and how to come out with wisdom. Let us be like David and serve you with integrity of heart and skillfulness of hands. Show us the way around the snare of the fowler. Help us to abide in your word. For you said that if our word, if your word abide in us and we abide in your word, we can ask what we will of the Father, and you do it. Don't let us waver in our commitment. God, help us to keep our vows. Don't let us be like Samson. Keep us from the lap of evil. We don't want to compromise our anointings. We don't want to have anything in the way. Don't use us in spite of us. Lord, don't let us be foolish with our birthright, but, oh God, turn our hearts to you. Give us another yes. Give us a mind to serve you. Give us a will to serve you. Don't let our flesh keep us from your will. Don't let selfish ambitions keep us from your purpose. Help us. Help us to cast down every imagination and to pull down every stronghold that hinders us from pleasing you. Move on the altars of our hearts and draw us closer to you. Draw us nearer, nearer, nearer God. Set our feet in the way that pleases you. Yes, don't let us go astray. Let your word accomplish his work in us. You've begun the good work, now bring it to pass. You're not a man that you should ever lie, neither are you the son of man that you should ever have to repent. You spoke it, now bring it to pass. You said it, now make it, make it good. We believe in you. We trust in you. Our hope is in you. Our faith is in you. We trust in you. God, we trust in you. And there is that bowl of manna, that golden bowl of manna that reminds us that you are our Jehovah Jireh. Yes, Lord, you have promised to provide for us. You said if evil men can give good gifts to their sons and daughters, how much more would God give to us if we'd only ask for it? So you said. If we commit our ways to you, glory to God. If we commit our ways to you, you give us the desires of our heart. You said that if we worry, we didn't have to. We don't have to worry about our needs because you already know what we need. You said that you would take care of us just like you take care of the lilies of the field and the sparrows of the air. You taught us not to be greedy or to be selfish, but to pray our daily bread. So we're calling on you for today's portion of grace. We need today's mercy. Lord, whatever you have for us today, Lord, we believe that we receive. We need the joy of the Lord that this world can't take away because it is the joy of the Lord that is our strength. Lord, we need your love to abide because your love is the power to forgive. It covers the multitude of faults. It covers the multitude of sins. Lord, give us your peace stress and anxiety wants to trouble the mind of the saints but Lord you said that you give us your peace Lord you said you'd help us to be patient even as you're patient with us Lord let our attitudes be kind let our actions be good let our approach be gentle Lord help us to be faithful 
give us control, self-control, control over our minds, control over our mouth, control over our money. Lord, give us the control over our influence. Give us what we need. We need favor. We need connections. God, we need money. We need healing. We need deliverance. Lord, we need a breakthrough tonight. We need to be set free. We need a turnaround. Give it to us today. God, you're omnipotent, God. Hallelujah. Just as Aaron's rod budded and blossomed and bloomed overnight. You are the God of power. You can do anything but fail. There's nothing too hard for you. There's nothing impossible to you. So we call on you, God, to show yourself mighty and strong. Demonstrate to the enemy that you're sovereign in our lives and that you're sovereign in all things. God, move your spirit against the powers of darkness. Vindicate your people. Bring them out of the darkness with a mighty hand. Rebuke the devourer for our sakes. God, you have the power to cast down the works of the enemy. Curse them and destroy them by fire. Reverse the doctor's negative report. Move Haman out of the way. Shut the mouth of Sanballat. Break the power of Jezebel and Delilah. Root up every unclean spirit. Disconnect every familiar spirit from his host. Beat back the powers of the dark arts and the satanic kingdom. There's no power greater than you. There's no power that can stand against you. The demons in hell hear the name of Jesus and they tremble. So drive them back by the force and the strength of your might. Show your strength in the earth. Establish your kingdom in the midst of the saints. We pray against Satan's power that it be broken and cast asunder. Raise your people up and set forth the standard of holiness and righteousness among your people. Break up every addiction and habit and dependency that disrupts the flow of your authority in the earth. Prove to the world that you are sovereign in all things. All earth moves at your command in the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. We humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And you said if we would submit to the authority of your hand, you said you had the power to raise us up. You have the power to purge us and to prune us. But remind us now that it's for our processing that we may bear fruit, more fruit, much fruit, and fruit that remains. Be our strength and our stronghold in the day of trouble. And now we come again into the Shekinah, to the mercy seat. Hallelujah. And we want to praise you right now. Glory. <laughs> we praise you right now because there's victory in Jesus. Glory to Jesus. There's victory in you. There is victory in you. No depression, no anxiety, no disease, no grief, glory. There is nothing that can steal the victory from you. And you've given us the victory. You said in your word that you causes us to have victory in all things. And so now we want to thank you for the victory. It's already done. The work has been completed. The snare has been broken. The breakthrough has already been made. And we thank you for the victory. Glory. We thank you for the victory. We bless you. We bless you. We thank you for the victory of Jesus' death on the cross. That it was vicarious. It should have been us to die, but you died for us. That is victorious. That hell couldn't keep him down. The grave couldn't hold him. He got up with all power in his hands. And you said to us in Romans that the same power of God that raised Jesus from the dead is now at work on the inside of us. So we believe you for exceeding and abundant above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. And we end this session of prayer. We bring it to its close by giving you some more glory. We give you all of the glory. We thank you that you're our Jehovah Jireh. You're our God who provides. We thank you that you're our Jehovah Nisi. You're the God who gives us the victory. We thank you that you're our Jehovah Shalom. You're the God who gives us peace. 
We thank you that you are our Jehovah Rapha. You are the God who heals us. We thank you that you are Jehovah Rohi. You are our shepherd. We thank you that you are Jehovah Mekadesh. You are the God who sanctifies us. We thank you that you are Jehovah Tiskanu. You are the God who is our righteousness. We thank you that you are Jehovah Shammah. That you are the God forever present with us. We thank you that you are Jehovah Sabaoth. That you are the Lord of hosts. The armies of heaven that fights for us. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you because you are our God. And besides you there is none other. We thank you that you release angels that excel in strength, that seek to do your will, to minister, and to war for us. Thank you for this time in your presence. Lord, you didn't have to welcome us, but you did. And we felt you while we were here. Lord, we thank you that you touched us while we were here. We thank you that you spoke to us while we were here and we thank you that even as we're leaving from the place of worship from intimacy with you that you're going to put something on us that will take it with us mm. we thank you that we're going to take it with us that the sickness will encounter your presence yes lord sickness yes lord will encounter your presence. We thank you that disease is going to encounter your presence, that grief is going to encounter your presence. We thank you that we're delivered and healed and set free by the power of Christ. Oh, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you so much. Oh, we love you so much. We love you. We love you. Oh, if we could say it a million times, we could not express how much we love you. Our entire being says we love you. Oh, how we love you. And we know it's only because you first loved us. So, Father, would you wrap your arms around us and keep us until we come to sit with you again, to speak with you, and to share our hearts. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, before uh, I relinquish my spot to the moderators, I want to give you one more scripture, and I want you to take this one home. Uh, I want you to take it over into next week, the rest of this week, and next week, and the rest of this month. There's a particular phrase in this verse that I want you to meditate on. I want you to, to rehearse it in your spirit because this is the word of the Lord to you. It says Isaiah 30 and 15. Isaiah 30 and 15. If you're on live, would you put it in the comments so that it will show up? Isaiah 30 and 15. It says, For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and you would not. I'm trying to tell you tonight, if I be a man of God, this is a season to hold your mouth 